She wasn't my grandmother, but like everybody else in Mount Thomas, we all called Madge Grand, you know? And she loved kids, and she treated us all like one big extended family. And there are always words of, of praise and comfort and sympathy, anything. Not to mention her famous pumpkin scones. Oh, yeah, she was certainly a great cook, oh, wasn't she? No, well, who'll ever forget a CWA street store. Yeah. Which she was still running at the age of 90. <gasps> oh, my favourite were those little um, butterfly cakes. Ah, I loved no, them. No, 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 the pumpkin scones. She always promised she was going to give me the recipe, but she never got around to it, so I don't suppose I'll ever get it now. Winifred, thank you. I'm going to miss your grandmother more than I can say, Emily. Oh, she was my patient for 50 years. Well, she always spoke very highly of you, Dr. Burke. Didn't she, Stephen? She certainly did. The Doc, please. Everybody calls me the Doc. I'll never forget the first time I met Madge Foster. She came into the surgery. She was complaining of indigestion. And, uh, oh, thank well, you very much. How did when the old ones go, yeah. yeah. Just hope the docs get... Somehow, you all right? I'm sorry. Uh, just touch hard, but that's all right. Why don't I get the docs? No, look, it's are... not necessary. I'll be all right. Doc, hmm? would you hmm? mind just having a, a quick look at Tom? Oh, yeah, sure. No, look, I'm fine, really. It's just indigestion. Where does it hurt? It's indigestion. Oh, God, don't tell me it's another heart attack. Oh, come on, it's not another heart attack. No, look, look, Tom, just calm down. We'll go down to the surgery and I'll give you a check out. Better sure than sorry. But I'm not even in any pain now. Tom, I'm all just right. let him check you out, I all right? I don't need checking out. Tom, just shut up. Uh, uh, Hello. Don't touch anything. Looks like you've been burned off. I always keep this internal surgery door locked. It's not locked now. Oh, uh, did they break in? Maybe. Where about to see drugs, Captain? Oh, it's through here. That, no, that's definitely locked. Where do you keep the key? Uh, in here. Yeah, no, don't touch. Is that where it usually is? Yeah. All right, we'll open this and check the contents after we've dusted for prints. Well, what about my records, huh? Sorry? There's a lot of confidential material in these uh, files. I think it's more likely they're after drugs. What about Tom's checkup? Oh, yes, we could do it now while we're waiting for your books. You're not serious. Won't take long. Some other time. Or this is a crime scene. And that'll be my blokes now, excuse me. As far as we can tell, there's nothing missing, but the uh, surgery door was unlocked. Oh, what about the drugs cabinet? Oh, it seems to be secured. Oh, they went after drugs. I've checked the cabinet, nothing's missing. I thought we agreed so that my you surgery is no longer a crime scene, let's get on with the examination. That's a good idea. Out of the question. The whole house is a crime scene under the control of Senior Detective Hashem, who will report to me in due course. Right, Detective? That's correct, boss. So, are you ready to go, Christine? Tom, I really think you should Otherwise have this exam. I prefer to walk home. <laughs> He'll be back. <clears throat> What's going on between those two? Uh, we... we don't ask. Now, are you sure nothing's missing from the surgery? Yeah, as far as I can judge. What about any valuables? Uh, valuables? Yeah. Some television, video, stereo, computer. Oh, oh. Uh, I do have a radiogram. Right. Yeah. Uh, that would be there. Uh huh. Okay. Um, how about silver, china, antique candlesticks? No, no. I'm afraid I live very simply. So you've got nothing that anyone wants to steal? The only things of value that I have are in my keepsake room. Oh, this is where I keep all the knickknacks the patients have given me over the years. It's like a museum. Well, that's exactly it, in a way. Museum of a lifetime service in a country town. And people gave you these things? Yeah, while they were alive or left them in their wills, yes. Do you know if anything's missing? Well, that's the point, you see. <laughs> I really don't know. It could be, but I couldn't be sure. There's such a clutter. An old bachelor in his clutter. There was never a Mrs. Burke? Oh, there was a lady of whom I was very fond, but she married somebody else. And she's dead now. Yeah, but most of my old friends are. It's the price of old age. Most people prefer it to the alternative. What, to death, you mean? Oh, when you get to my age, sometimes death can be a friend. These souvenirs, are they, uh, are they worth much? I really couldn't tell you. That chair of Mrs. Simon's might fetch a bit at auction. 
Real Dresden. Mm -hmm. Antique desk. Oh, no, no. That belonged to Lucy Clark. She used to be sitting at it on the veranda of her house whenever I called. Poor child died of encephalitis, 1962. Her mother couldn't bear to see the desk again. So she gave it to you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so many memories. Have you got a list of this stuff? No, no, I'm sorry. He's got a stuffed pig's head someone gave him. He's got a dead kid's desk. I was amazed he didn't have skulls hanging up in there. People give him things. What's he supposed to do? Chuck it away? Well, it's creepy. He lives alone in a house full of dead people's things. Oh, settle down, constable. Stuff those prints. Uh, Jack's onto it. Fat lot of good will do, though. Oh, it's good to know I'm not wasting my time over here. Yeah, well, it's pretty hard to solve a burg when you don't even know what's stolen. Or if anything's been stolen. Well, why else would you go to the bother of breaking in? Well, you might have knew about his Aladdin's Cave of Treasure. You help yourself and nobody be the wiser. Oh. Why do you say who would know about it? Keepsake room. Never heard of it. And you've been a patient how long? He delivered me. Wow, he must be He lost. must be ancient. He's turning 80 next week. And he's still practising? No, he's semi-retired, but he's not senile yet, Parrish. He's still got all his marbles. Oh, and a lot of other people's as well. Oh, well, some of his keepsakes are junk, but some of them be worth something. I mean, Benny Danders would have a field day. One very rich old doctor. I don't know what you're implying, Constable, but I can assure you Doc Burke was never in medicine for the money. Bulk bills, does he? I don't know if bulk billing had even been invented when he was still full-time, but I have known him to accept a side of lamb from a farmer who was short of cash. Should have checked the fridge. And he still makes house calls, and he still goes out in the middle of the night, and he knows all his patients' names. They don't make doctors like him anymore. OK. We got the picture. He's a saint. You know, there's no way we can even begin to repay the doc for all the lives he's saved and all the thousands of kindnesses that he's shown over the years. But a few of us thought that on the occasion of his 80th birthday, we'd like to give him a small token of our esteem. Uh, how small? Well, we thought an engraved silver salver might be nice. You can add it to the rest. Nice idea. So you'd like to contribute? Yes. Uh, payday's kind of tomorrow, Chris. No, it's fine. Chris, are you obviously one of the doctor's patients? He delivered me. <laughs> I should have guessed it. Well, no, he didn't, actually. He got here too late, but he did help Dave clean up. You ever hear of this uh, keepsake room? The what? It's a room where keeps gifts from grateful patients. Never heard of it, but it doesn't surprise me. Everyone loves it. Damn you to hell, Doc Burke. Well, that's all the thanks I get, is it? Come on, Harry, what's going on? I'm getting out of a sick bed to get down here tonight. Ah, uh, calm down, Harry. Remember your blood pressure. Yeah, sick with you all these years. Everybody else says you're past it. You silly old fool. Oh, Harry, that's nothing. You can't do the simplest thing for a bloke. It's all right, Thomas. That's a friendly disagree. Friendly me <laughs> out. You're no friend. Miserable old bastard. And I should be knocking the hell out of you. Harry. Oh, act your age, you silly old fool. Who are you calling old? Come on, Harry. What about your dinner? Jeannie went to a lot of trouble over this. Oh, forget it. I'll get him home. Got the job. Come on, sir. How's your heartburn, Tom? Wonderful, thank you. Thought I'd ask. Harry, what was that all about? Oh, confidential, you know, the doctor-patient doctor thing. Look, I really expect more of a man of your advanced years and standing in the community. I think you'd better go home and cool off, don't you? You can't throw me out. You're lucky I don't arrest you for causing an affray. Can I catch my breath first? You can catch as much breath as you like. Just don't go back into the dining room tonight, all right? You all right? You, you want to sit down for a bit? No, no I'm all right. Got a few problems with the doc, huh? You miserable old coot. Why do you say that? None of your business, girlie. If you want to make yourself useful, get me a cab. We might just be able to help. Sorry, Tom. Confidential. Doctor patient thing. Hmm, that's the way. You should try the shepherd's pie. Very good tonight. I'm sure it is. Have you had any more ideas about what the burglar might have taken? Well, it wasn't drugs. My records are all intact. And quite frankly, they're welcome to anything else. Yeah, well, that's not the way we see it, I'm afraid. Could you let me know if anything else occurs to you? Of course. When you make that appointment with me. Yes, then it would be fine. Now we've got the fingerprints report. Only the doctor's prints on the drugs cabinet. What about the front door? Uh, outside knob wipe clean. 
Police, Inside not. Either a fool or an amateur. No, no, no they're so good, but they're nothing on record. Well, right. let's hope the doc can finally remember what's being stolen. If anything. Well, maybe some grateful patient changed their mind and stole something of their own back. Thank you, Parrish. Well, we know he's got at least one enemy. Not everyone thinks he's a saint. Uh, boss, there's a message for you. Simon Rogers call. Who? Uh, he's uh, Mrs Foster's solicitor. They're having a reading of the will down at the bowling club at about ten. We'd be grateful if you could attend. Me? Why? You must be a beneficiary, boss. Hardly. Gran leaves you all her goods and chattels, boss. You could set up your own keepsake room. Not funny, Parry. <laughs> I think you already know Emily and her husband, Stephen. Yeah, yes, Sergeant. Yes, we met at the funeral. I'm really sorry about your Gran. She's a great loss to our community. Tell me, Sergeant, are you here by invitation? I am, as a matter of fact. I can't imagine why, unless Mr Rogers is expecting trouble. Maybe. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I appoint my solicitor, Simon Rogers, to be executor of this my will and trustee of my estate. I give and bequeath to Sergeant Thomas Croydon of the Mount Thomas Police my recipe for pumpkin scones, knowing how much he always appreciated them. Thanks, Grant. I'll treasure it. To continue, I give and bequeath my cameo brooch to my granddaughter, Emily, in the hope cameo. that she'll pass it on to her it's daughter, beautiful. if she has one, and the sum of $5,000. I give, devise and bequeath all the rest and residue of my property, real and personal, to Dr Richard Burke of Mount Thomas in gratitude for his exceptional no. care. No. She can't do this. This isn't right. I can assure you, Mr Farrow, this is a legally accredited last will You're not going to get away with this, you bastard. Mr Farrow... My wife's grandmother was perfectly healthy only one week ago. Suddenly she's dead and you inherit the lot. Your saintly legend murdered an old woman for her money. She rang us to ask us up for the weekend, said she'd never been better. And when you saw her? We didn't. Stephen plays sport on the weekends and has to entertain clients and so... I don't imagine the detective's terribly interested in our social life, darling. I was just explaining. Look, bottom line, sudden death of a previously healthy woman, recent will. The only living relative gets $5,000 while the doctor inherits the rest of the estate. Adds up to suspicious circumstances, wouldn't you say, detective? It could be read that way, yes. OK, so how do we make an official complaint? You leave it to me, I'll contact Homicide in the State Coroner's Office. You realise this could involve an exhumation. Yeah, I can see this would be very distressing for it's you. It's fine, Mr. Farrow. Look, the property's worth over $300,000 alone, Darl. For us, that'd mean the end of our mortgage and ahead of the game for the rest of our lives. You do whatever you need to do, Detective. Right, well, uh, thanks very much. We'll uh, be in contact. We'll be at the Imperial. Thanks for your help, Detective. You're welcome. What? I'm glad you've got the time to waste. I didn't think we had a choice. The man has made an official complaint. Look, it should be a civil matter if he's got a problem with the will. What if he thinks it's homicide? Oh, come on, the doc is not a murderer. He's dedicated his whole life to saving lives. And he doesn't need Granite's house. They he's got a perfectly good house of his own. They are entitled to have their doubts put yes. to rest. Boss, how would you feel if you thought your granny had been bumped off? Oh, think don't be it. stupid. Your granny. I'm going to go and visit the dog. Is it your heart? There is nothing wrong with my heart. There is nothing wrong with my heart. I told you. This is official business. Oh, I still don't know what they took. Look at burglary. This, this matter of Madge Foster's will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pity Madge wasn't here to see the look on that young cove's face. She never liked it. He has accused you of murder. He's got no evidence. He says that she was perfectly healthy a week before she died. Well, you may very well have thought so. Madge had stomach cancer, Tom. Inoperable. If they'd visited more often, they might have figured it out. She never told them. Well, you know, the generation, crack hardy, cop it sweet, don't whinge, last of the pioneers. What about this will? Oh, that's very embarrassing. I mean, I didn't uh, seek to inherit. I don't want it. In fact, I shall have to take legal advice as to what to do about it. I mean, doctors get left things by their patients, knick-knacks, sometimes money, and one accepts it in the spirit it's given. Yeah, this estate is worth quite a lot, it seems. Yeah, oh, like this has ever happened to me before. And uh, the circumstances, one can understand the pharaohs reacting the way they are. But uh, on the other hand, perhaps they should have visited more often. So there is nothing you would like to tell me about the circumstances surrounding Grand Foster's death? Thank you for putting it so politely, Tom. 
She was old, she was terminally ill, she was in great pain. You know what I'm asking, Doc. All I'll say is I took no heroic measures to try to prolong her agony. And if that's murder, Tom, you better lock me up right away. Because I'd do the same for you. So? So, there's your explanation. She had inoperable stomach cancer and didn't tell them. And who was her doctor at the time? Dr. Burke, of course. And who inherited? He didn't ask to inherit. Oh, my heart bleeds for him. PJ? Yeah, I know, he's a saint. And he's your doctor, and you like him a lot. Which is why it's good that I'm investigating this, not you. Yeah, all right, point taken. Where are you going? I'm just going to check this cancer story. It is not a story. Come on, Joe, work to do. Stomach cancer. She was definitely dying. It's amazing she lasted as long as she did. Have a look. <laughs> Mel, I could be looking at a map of Bolivia. No, I'll take my word for it. She was going to die anyway. Going to die anyway? What, what are you saying? In some way, Dr. Burke hastened Mrs. Foster's death as a matter of mercy? It's a grey area, PJ. I'm very shaky ground. Mel, come on. What do you really think professionally? Ask yourself. Would you rather three good days or ten bad ones? The amount of pain Mrs. Foster must have been enduring obviously required management by medication. And? You have a condition where you're in agony and you're dying. But the medication which manages the pain level can hasten your death. So it's possible that Dr. Burke hastened Mrs. Foster's death? Every doctor has to make those choices. Do they? I mean, Mel, I'm a copper. I'm sworn to uphold the law. No ifs, no buts, no choices. But you and Dr. Berg, I mean, you're medics. You're sworn to preserve life. There's no difference. PJ, when I first came to Mount Thomas, I wasn't exactly Doc Burke's greatest fan either. I thought he was a doddering old fool. He'd come to the hospital and meddle with my patients. But I watch him with the old people and he stays with them to the end. I mean, look at the care he's given that crazy old bugger, Harry Quinn. Bottom line, Mel? Bottom line, he would have acted in his patient's best interest. And if he thought their best interest would kill him off quicker? If it had been your grandmother, you probably would have thanked him. Oh, wait. Look, my mum's a crook, right? And when she dies, I want it to be in her own time, not when the good doctor decides to play God. Your mother mightn't agree. And if he did it for the money, Mel? You never give up, do you? Oh, well, you know, sometimes that's considered to be a virtue. <sighs> anyway, look, once I get Dr. Burke's medical records, I'm going to hand the whole thing over to Homicide and they can deal with it. When's the exhumation? Uh, tomorrow morning. I can assure you that the town is not going to like it. It's, it's not uh... right. It's dishonouring the dead. I'm sorry, Miss... Miss... What did I tell you? Starling. Starling. But an autopsy is the only way we can work out if she was murdered. Why would anyone kill poor dear Madge? Oh, only about 300,000 reasons. Her estate was worth quite a bit, you know. You can't be suggesting Doc Burke had anything to do with it. It was a suspicious death. He was Gran's doctor. She trusted him. Opportunity. He had access to lethal drugs. Means. She left him her estate. Motive times at least 300,000. It's a wicked, a wicked, wicked lie. Oh, leave him alone, Winifred. It's not worth it. Going around suggesting things. It's a crying shame. Someone ought to put a stop to it. You, you two over here, these people are committing character assassination. I'm simply trying this to ascertain whether my wife's You really did defend him, No, thanks. So you got to dig her up. Well, what if she was poisoned? Don't you want to find out if your precious doc's been bumping off his patients? He's a saint, you mongrel. He'll get a crown in heaven while you'll burn in hell. All right, settle down, Winifred. You too, thank you, Mr. Farrow. I know you think as highly of Doc Burke as I do, but unfortunately, an allegation's been made and the law must take its course. It should read Marjorie Jane Foster. Done. Why? Let's make sure it's Grant. Just do it, Emma. Yes, it is. Okay, 
That obviously went well. Well, it's in the coroner's hands now. With a bit of luck, they won't find anything. Well, I wouldn't be so sure. Ben and I have been doing a bit of checking around. What? And... Well, I thought it might be a good idea. Who asked you to do that? Well, Sarah Robinson rang in after the Barney at the pub. Turns out Gran wasn't the only one to leave a big chunk of her estate to the doctor. The ring around has yielded ten people, all of which who have died and left money to the good doctor. There's you know, two thousand here, five thousand, a few ten thousand dollar amounts. And that's just one day's research, all tip right. of the iceberg. Okay. Now these people, they're all his patients. Everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very good. But next time you tell me what's going on, all right? But you're at the exhumation. Don't worry about that. How'd you get onto them? I just rang a few bereaved relatives and the whole thing kind of snowballed. Excellent. Boss isn't going to be too happy digging up one old friend to get the dirt on another. That's just one of the disadvantages of being a country copper. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah, OK. Can I help you? Hmm, I wanted a word with Tom Croydon, too. Grant Foster's will. Hmm, it's caused such animosity. I suppose I should have anticipated it, but there was so little contact between Madge and the granddaughter that I thought perhaps there was some kind of understanding. My blood's thicker than water, Doc. Hmm. It sows money. Well, I had intended to sell the property and give the money to charity, but it doesn't seem like such a good idea now, so I think I'll just give it all to Emily. Not to both of them? Ah, I don't like the husband. Nasty piece of work. No, I'll give the estate to Emily and she can pay all the legal costs involved. <laughs> well, I haven't lost all my marbles. Some people would say you're being more than generous. I can't live in two houses. I've no one to leave it to. Why would I want it? You just tell me where she's staying and I'll phone and tell her. To Emily. Yeah, I, I told you, he doesn't need the money or the house. Well, it could be seen as a way of deflecting suspicion. Product of a guilty conscience. You two have really got the dock in your sights, haven't you? No, look, I have got a completely open mind about it. We're just following all avenues of inquiry, boss. Such as? Uh, such as a list of bequests the deceased relatives have left, Dr. Bird. Well, people are starting to ring us now. It's almost like a telephone or something. I can't be this much. I think it's just the beginning. I just spoke to the pathologist in the coroner's court. They've got Grand Foster back on the slab. She had enough morphine in her system to kill a horse. What's a lethal level of morphine to one person may not be lethal when administered to another. Don't chop logic with me, Doctor. Did you administer a lethal level of morphine to Mrs. Foster? You know yourself that a long-term heroin user can take a dosage that would kill you or me. Oh, we're not talking about heroin users. Mrs. Foster needed a large dosage to manage her pain. Far in excess of anything that you or I could safely absorb. A lethal level for us, but not for her. But she died. That was inevitable. The choice was dying in what we term chemical oblivion or dying in great pain. She signed a paper asking for pain relief but no other treatment i acted in accordance with her wishes right and now this chemical oblivion does it kill you quicker steady on pj it can shorten the process does it kill you quicker see we're all gonna die aren't we i mean nobody gets off the planet alive if the death rate runs at a hundred percent but the one thing that makes a death a murder is when someone makes someone else die too soon. Fifty years too soon. A minute too soon. It's the too soon that makes it murder, Doctor. It is not as clear cut yes, as Yes, it that. is! Now, I'll ask you again. Did you administer a drug to Mrs Foster that made her die sooner than she needed PJ, to die? And if so, have you done it to others? Now. Have you? What do you think you're doing? You're out of control. Oh, I'm out of control. We've got a doctor in there who's been killing his patients for 50 odd years and I'm the one out of control. Where's your proof? You've seen the figures. Look, he's been putting people down like dogs and cats for years. Yeah, oh, you're speculating in advance of the evidence and you know how dangerous that is. Me, dangerous? Well, what about your mate in there? What's up? Nothing, nothing. No, 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 I'm gonna get the dog. It's my painful duty to inform you that you're going to be around for quite a while, eh? So I was in the heart. Oh, it's going like clockwork. Don't tell me. You reckon I need to lose weight? 
Well, why? I've seen people of your bill live into their 90s. Look, if you want my advice, I'd say give up beer and take up whiskey. But apart from that. <laughs> now, does that mad dog detective of yours want another bite at me, or can I go? We'll be in contact once we get the medical details. You know where I am. This is a bottomless pit. You're going to have to dig up the whole cemetery, mate. Well, you can add another four grand. Why am I wasting my time here? You should have studied medicine. Bye -bye. Another two over here. Only two. Oh, well, every bit counts. As my old Scottish grand used to say, mini a mickle makes a muckle. I'm fine. Yeah, well, how come you haven't drunk your tea? Right in your bickies. The doc says it's just heartburn. Aye. But, uh, you don't believe him. I didn't say that. Tell you what, how about I run you down to the hospital and uh, you can have a word with Mel Carter. Everyone's entitled to a second opinion. Well, far as we can tell, your heart seems to be working okay at the moment. So this, uh, what you call this cardiac workup revealed what? Well, we've ruined tests on cardiac enzymes, troponin, serial ECGs. They should be back in a day or so. So until then, take it easy. Felt exactly like my first heart attack, you know? It could have been gastric reflux. Heartburn, originating not 100 miles from the Brown Owl Bakery. Who's been talking to you? Doctors just know these things. Joe Parrish. It wasn't Joe. It's was Chris Riley, wasn't it? I don't know. A man has one vanilla slice and you won't get no, off No, you can bag. stop fishing. Bottom line is, a man with your history could lose a bit of weight. And a bit of exercise wouldn't go astray either. Mind if I take the first opinion on that? Any competent doctor would agree with me. Doc Burke. He didn't. Well, I should get the rest of the results in the next few days. So until then, no vanilla slices. Uh. Oh, Doc. To have you a minute. Sorry, Tommy. No, that's OK. Yes, Miss Darling? I just wondered if you could tell me what are the symptoms of a morphia overdose? What? My mother had morphia at the end from Doc Burke. She left him a little something. Not a huge amount, but in view of um, what he'd done and how he'd helped her through the pain at the end, it, it didn't seem, well, excessive. And what are you that... suggesting? She kept saying she wanted to die. I wouldn't listen. I didn't want to hear it. Maybe he listened. What did Mel say? Oh, well, still a few test results to come through, but looking good. She's let you come home, so things must be all right. I'm back to work, actually. Ah! Uh, she reckons my heart's OK. Great. That's good news, boss. Uh, do you want to add your lunch to the... Uh, oh, yeah, are you going to get that uh, shepherd's pie from last night? A salad sandwich. All right. And some fruit. All right, and some fruit. Chris, I've uh, got that little contribution for Oh, uh, it's Doc's fine. Don't present. worry about it. It's a bit okay. late, but... Uh... Don't worry. No, no, no. You sure? Oh, I... I... Postponed it till all this business is over. Not you too. Bloody Doc Burke, he doesn't deserve anything. Harry. Come back. Can't we talk about this? Why? Because you think you can negotiate anything. Well, not me, not anymore. What, you don't Mrs. Mean Riley, that. would you be good enough to make up my half of the bill? As you might have gathered, I'm checking out. Certainly. Emily, do you need a hand with your bags? He was spewing. Yeah? Yep. Yeah, well, it couldn't happen to a nicer oh. bloke. Oh, now, now. Oh, this is funny. I didn't look like they're having too many problems. No, that means nothing, Jack. Well, I wonder what brought it on. Easy, she now owns her own house. A cynical point of view, but probably right. Not probably right. I am right. You know, I feel sorry for Stephen. He's lost a house and a wife in one day. That's right. Ah, uh, Mr. Farrow. Can I help you? Yes. I've been robbed. I went back to the hotel. From where? Well, I was attempting to offer my wife a lift to the train station. Attempting? She didn't need my help. She'd ordered a cab. Go on. I went up to my room and found it was unlocked. You always lock it? Always. I went inside and found the room a mess, things everywhere. I immediately checked for my valuables and found a particular item missing. The what item was this? A book. A very valuable book. Nothing else? Well, not that I could see. Um, maybe your wife packed it by mistake, made a bit of a mess as she was leaving? No, we had separate rooms. Well, apparently I snore. Mm. Anyway, she wouldn't have gone into my room. She didn't have a key. No, it was somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now, who do you suspect? Well, obviously somebody with a key. I mean, the publican must have a spare key or a master key. 
A master key? What does he think this is, the Hilton? But you've got spare keys, Chrissy. I've seen them. Yeah, well, they ought to be in that drawer. Oh, so anybody could have knocked them off. No, I keep this door locked, which means anyone would have had to have come through the bar. But any of the staff could have got to them? Yeah, except they wouldn't have. I trust them. Uh, right, so some petty thief with opportunity, oh, yeah? yeah, some petty thief with an interest in old books, I suppose. Any I don't other... <laughs> Sorry. Um, any other keys fit that door? Well, they're pretty simple keys. Who knows what they might fit? Mount Thomas 509. Mount Thomas 509. Zero 10 to 213, Street, Mount Thomas. Right. Home of Dr Richard Burke. Call it in, Joe. Mount Thomas 509 to BKC, code 5 of the last. We've got an ETA on the ambos. Yeah, bye, 509. He's still unconscious, but otherwise seems to be in one piece, which is pretty lucky at his age. Any idea what he was hit with? Mm, hard to say. Could have been the proverbial blunt instrument. There are no obvious indications. Could it have been accidental? I mean, a fall, something like that? No, there were signs of a break-in. Look, I'll let you know when his condition changes. Thanks, Mel. So who bashed Doc Burke? Stand in line. Plenty of people have got grudges. Well, Stephen Farrow, maybe. Revenge for losing the house. Not to mention Emily. Emily? Why Emily? Well, she might have decided he really did kill her gran. Thought she'd take the law into her own hands. Yeah. Well, Harry Quinn had been more likely. He's got a bee in his bonnet about the good doctor. That's assuming, of course, that somebody actually broke in to deliberately assault the doc. I mean, he could have just disturbed a burglar. What? Two burgs in three days? And we checked the surgery, drugs cabinet, radiogram, even the keepsake room. Nothing seemed to be disturbed. I think we have to accept it's a personal attack. We should get them all in. You people are beyond belief. What makes you think a respectable citizen like myself would assault an old man? Did you assault Dr Burke? No. What time is this supposed to have happened? Uh, around 2.30 this afternoon. At 2.30, officers, I was here with you reporting a theft, remember? 2.42, to be exact. I logged it. You're suggesting I bashed the doctor, then came straight to the police station? Where did you go after you left here? A Paragon Cafe, where I had an indifferent cup of coffee and an inedible pie. I've always enjoyed the pie at the Paragon, but we'll check with Kim. Ah, do so, officers. Please, do so. Kim at the Paragon reckons he came in about quarter two, left about five past three. And the emergency call was logged in at... 3.04. It was made from Doc's own phone. The caller was definitely a woman. Emily. I'm on hold to D24. They're trying to organise a replay of this tape, but they're just stuffing me around. Becca, okay, how are you going with tracking her down? Oh, uh, left a message at a, on her mobile phone and uh, tried to in uh, Melbourne. There's no answer. Well, that's if she went to Melbourne. I mean, that's where Stephen thought she was going, but she's got a house here now, remember? What's the holder? Not yet she hasn't. Oh, she might have a key. Jack, you can have to Mrs Foster's house. Fantastic. Thanks. Yep. We're catching it through now. I need an ambulance. I need one now. There's a man injured at number 213 Bullock Court Street, Mount Thomas. That's 213 Bullock Court. Please come now. I know that voice. I went over there because I just had to find out whether Doc Burke killed my mother. You know better than to listen to gossip, don't you, Winifred? It wasn't just the gossip. I thought, what if Dr Burke had given her an overdose? I mean, at the time, I thought merciful release, but... But what a terrible thing if he had. So you went over to confront Doc Burke? The door was open, I went in, and I nearly fell over him. He was on the floor, lying there bleeding. So he had already been assaulted? Yes, and he wouldn't wake up. So I called emergency for an ambulance and, and then I ran away. I'm so ashamed. Will I be arrested? Oh, it's a pretty grey area, Winifred. I wouldn't think so. Oh, I'd almost welcome some form of punishment. When my mother passed on, all I ever felt was relief. You know, the suffering ended. I never shed a tear. It's unnatural. And I have felt guilty about that ever since. Just a minute, young man. You're not trying to say it has something to do with this. You're the one who offered to beat the living daylights out of him the other night. And I might have if you stepped outside with me, but this, not this. So where were you, Harry? Here. Hey, Chrissy. How long's young Harry been here? Oh, since about three. Why? All right then. On the way here. Walking past the doc's place. I never touched him. I know we had our differences, but it's kind of patient-doctor stuff, not, nothing personal. Want to tell us about it? 
Listen, Curly, I'm bloody terminal. I'm in such pain I wouldn't have, well, I wouldn't inflict it on my worst enemy. I keep asking the doc if he'd give me the old age of father, but he won't do it. He keeps refusing. You asked him to kill you? Yeah, uh -huh. well, he did it for Madge Foster. Why couldn't he do it for me? But no, no, that's why I got annoyed. What makes you think you're terminal? Has someone told you that? I look at me walking about like death warmed up. Can't eat, can't pee, can't sleep. You can drink. Well, it's brandy. The only thing that kills the pain. Does it interfere with any medication you're taking? Medication? God, what good's that going to do? So you're not taking your pills? I've got a cup of pool, all colours of the rainbow. Never take any of them. All right, Harry. Thanks for your time. Right, Constable, I've got work to do. We sure do. Come, Mr Quinn. Oh. Want to come with us? Mm -hmm. Harry asked the doctor to kill him. Well, he thought he was terminal, right? Uh, Miss Bleeding Hardy you took him to the doctor. But as it turns out, he wasn't. I took him to Dr Mel, who adjusted his medication. I was either that or let him become the next victim of Dr Death. Dr Death, as you call him, Parrish, is currently fighting for his own life in hospital because some cowardly maggot belted him. Are we any closer to finding out who that was? Now, the question remains, did they break in to bash him or did they bash him because he disturbed the Midberg? Run that by me again? <laughs> Maybe they didn't get whatever it was they were after and came back for it. You got those photos of the keepsake, right? Yeah, and this time we've got a fighting chance of finding out what was taken. Good. Now everything's correct in this corner. Same here. Unless... No, nothing. Have a look in there. <sighs> well, there's no gaps. Hang on. It's a... Stamp album. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't here before. Well, someone's broken in to put it back. Reginald Foster, 1927. Mr. Grand Foster, do you Could be. Benny, I hear you're a bit of an expert with stamps. What do you make of My knowledge of stamps stops with sticking them in envelopes, but uh, there seems to be a lot of them here. They're quite old. They could be quite valuable. A valuable book. It's yours, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Thank you. So where'd you find it? Even though on the inside cover the name is Mr. Reginald Foster. Grand Foster's late husband? Yes, I know who it is. Grand gave it to me the last time I saw her. She knew I was interested in stamps. No, it's funny because your wife reckons Mrs. Foster gave it to Dr. Burke. No, that isn't true. No? Then how come we found it in his bookshelf and it actually looked like it lived there? I have no idea. Maybe he stole it. No, we know who stole it. We also know who put it back. Was a stamp collection ever valued? Grand did after Grandad died, for insurance. But she said she couldn't afford the premiums. Stephen was furious about that. He wanted to take it back down to Melbourne and put it in a safety deposit box. Gran wouldn't hear of it. She wanted it by her. Said it reminded her of Grandad. So she gave it to Dr Burke? As a memento, she said. I guess she must have known she was dying. What happened then? Stephen disappeared during the wake. And then this morning, I found him gloating over the album. Are you suggesting he stole it from Doc Burke? That's what our last fight was about. I demanded that he put it back, but he refused point blank. So I took it from his room at the Imperial. How'd you get in? I tried my key, it fitted. And I returned the album to Doc Burke's. I lifted that bit of cardboard and let myself in. I put the album back on the shelf and I was leaving when... Mm -hmm. Come on. Doc came out of nowhere. I didn't think he was home and he had a weapon. What was it? One of those draft stoppers, you know, you put along the bottom of the door. He swung it at me. I pushed it away and ran out. He must have fallen. I didn't mean to hurt him. I didn't know he was unconscious until your constable tracked me down. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not quite sure what the charges are for putting property back. It may just be unlawfully on premises. There is the assault. Which a good mouthpiece would prove was self-defence. What about Stephen Farrow? Mm, burglary for starters. Can't get over him having the front to report the property he stole is stolen. Well, the stamp album is potentially worth more than the actual house. Oh, anyway, well done, you two. You solved two crimes. 
We still don't know if Doc Berg's been bumping up his patients, though. No, we don't. How is he, boss? This time I went and found out. You were quick. Sorry? You didn't get my message about the doc. Oh, he's away. And resting comfortably. He'll be glad to see you. I wish that were true. Harry, how are you feeling? <laughs> More pills. <laughs> they say these are much better than the others, though. Man's got a rattle when he walks. <laughs> but, Harry, could I, uh... I'll just ask you a question. What makes you think that Doc Burke would agree to kill you? Well, I've heard that he'd done it for others. Really, eh? Oh, there's poor devils who need it. I'm not naming names, mind you, but that's what I heard. It's just gossip. The Doc would never agree to something like that. And how came he agreed to do it for me just before he was bashed? Doc Burke agreed to kill you this morning. Oh, it's about the size of it. Mind you, it's a good job he didn't go through with it because this doctor... Well, Dr Carter. Carter, well, she put me on a new pill. And how do I feel? <laughs> Wouldn't be dead for quits. Hello. Oh, Tom. Doc, how are you feeling? Oh, all the better for seeing you. Nice of you to drop in. <sighs> it's not a social visit, I'm afraid. Oh, it's this, the whole team. Senior Detective Hashem has a duty to perform. I'd rather you did it, Tommy. Dr. Richard Burke, you're under arrest for the murder of Marjorie Jane Foster. I must inform you that you're not obliged to say or do anything, but anything you do say may be given an evidence to understand that. Yes, I understand, Tom. I understand. Well, the good news is that my heart's as sound as a bell. Well, thank God for that. Oh, but... So, what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is I suffer from heartburn. Oh, and no, I tell her the really bad oh, news, Harry, boss. shut up. Vanilla slices are banned for life. No, <laughs> tragedy. Yeah, I should hope so. You two are determined to make a man's life a misery, aren't you? Well, at least you're still alive. Tom Croydon lives. I've been to that. Thank you. 